today we're taking a look at the Ackerman pant pens I ordered from ackermanpins.com. Now these are interesting in that they are like fountain pens, but you can get these. <coughs> Sorry, cat is climbing all around my lap and about to fall and I was about to get claws all in my thighs. These are interesting in that they are like fountain pens, but you can get these with a variety of art nibs. This is the G nib, for example. It has a pump action, which is used to um, get the ink flowing. A twist off back cap that reveals a, let me see if I can get it out, fairly substantial filling compartment. So I ordered the G-Nib because I am obsessed with G-Nibs in case you guys haven't noticed on this channel. And because I have modded a Jin Hao to accept a G-Nib as well. Let me get that cap back in there. I'll do that off air. And I also ordered a music nib. And part of that is because I think music nibs seem very interesting. I've never owned one myself. A music nib has three tines instead of two. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus on that. And it is becoming increasingly less common in fountain pens. I do believe noodlers, uh, the Nippon set, Nippon set has a, um, a music nib. I think there are a few other fountain pens that offer a music nib, but I wanted to play around with one before I committed. Come on, I'm having a really hard time getting that cap back in there. There we go. And I have not cleaned these out. That's gonna be my next step, but I did want to show them to you guys. Now, also with my order, Ackerman Pins was kind enough to send me some spare nibs. So I have a music nib, a single tie nib that I'm gonna have to look into, and then a gold G nib. Now I have loads of G nibs, so I appreciate them sending me these, um, but I will probably replace my G nib with a regular G nib if it wears out, because I've never used a gold G nib, so I just don't know whether or not that's something I enjoy. But I really appreciate them sending the music nib and that additional nib. They also sent um, quite a lot of handwritten notes, which I appreciate, and I need to read over before I read them to you guys. Oh, and they also so also included. These are not just to store your pins. These are actually replacement capsules, like replacement ink capsules, and they have these neat little rubber gaskets. So I could theoretically fill this with the ink of my choice and go ahead and cap it for travel. So these are actually very cleverly designed. So let's take a look. They did send an informational booklet on the pump pin adapters, on filling the pin, a welcome to the new pin, a diagram of everything included. And I actually read all of this without realizing there was stuff in there. And on my shipping details, okay, ah, all right. So I'm still waiting on another pin to come out, but the reason, my hawk quill, um, but the reason for that it probably hasn't arrived is I ordered it right at Christmas time. I really didn't, I figured they wouldn't be able to get these out. Um, I figured it would take a while for them to come out due to Christmas shipping and stuff. But they are, my hawk quill is in the mail and they wanted to get these to me ASAP. They also included a music nib, a sketch nib, and a titanium zebra manga G nib uh, as an apology for the weight. But I didn't even notice the weight to be honest because I was in Louisiana. And I paid $34.95 for each of these pens, which um, I have no, I don't think that's overpriced, but we'll find out. I thought that was a good, I was excited because it seems like they have designed and make these cat, uh, pins themselves. 
And uh, if you watched my wink pin video, the plastic body feels very, very similar to the plastic used on the wink pin. Let me grab that wink pin. Very similar, but not exact. The wink pin might be a little bit heavier. And as somebody who loves art supplies, I'm always excited when um, people sort of come up with their own. So uh, I complain a lot about how there's never anything new under the sun, but this is new. And they also sent me a lot, I mean a lot of ink samples and they included a huge list so I can keep track of it all which I super appreciate because I am only just now getting into fountain pens, so I don't have a huge ink collection myself. And there's a lot of really nice inks in here. So let's take a look at them. Um, I'm not going to swatch them in this video. This is, this is a video about these pins. And now I'm kind of tempted to wait till the hot quill comes out, but for all I know, it could be in the mailbox right now. I know it was on back order. So I appreciate them sending these as soon as possible. Ooh, look. And I love the vials too. Loads of super pretty colors, it seems like. So, oh, okay. They're also labeled on the bottle, which is good because I would never be able to keep track of all that. Gee, it's like handling jewels or something. Okay, so I received Iroshizuku Kujaku, which is a lovely blue color. Noodler's Ottoman Rose, which I've heard a lot of people talk about. Noodler's General of the Army, which is a green. It almost looks like an opaque green because there's some settling in the tube. Noodler's Habanero. Wow, lots of like really intense colors. Diamine Magical Forest, which has some silver shimmer in it, which is really cool. I have a couple of their shimmer tastic inks and those seem to have the gold shimmer. Diamine Tropical Glow. Ooh, another one with nice shimmer. Lamy Turquoise. Noodler's Burning Red. Iroshizuku Yu Yake. Iroshizuku Yamabudo. Pelican Brilliant Brown. Iroshizuku Chiku Ren. Ren. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I can't talk this morning. Iroshizuku um, Ajisai. Diamine Enchanted Ocean. Ooh, that's pretty. It's got a bit of a silver glimmer in there. Diamine Gray. Noodler Sequoia Green. I love that they sent all these really colorful colors. I know that sounds redundant, but like really bright, vivid things and things that shimmer. Very, very appealing. Diamine Ancient Copper, which is almost a blood color. Very pretty. Iroshizuku Momiji. Iroshizuku Sioryo, or Sioro, sorry. S-Y-O hyphen R-O. Ooh, J. Urbine uh, Emerald of Chivoir. Diamine Amaz Amethyst. Sailor Yamadori. Noodler's Black Swan Australian Rose. And finally, Noodler's Purple Martin. So I'm gonna sort these into companies and that way I can swatch them by company in case you guys are curious about that. I'm also going to clean out those pins and ink them up so we can take a look. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, so it's smart to read your instructions before you start disassembling. So it says, turn the clip to expose the air hole. So there is an air hole. Ah, I see it now. It's very hard to see on camera, but you can see it quite easily. So turn the kip clip to expose the air hole. This relieves pressure when you cap or uncap the pump pin. It also lets water drain when you wash the cap. Cover the air hole when you store the pin as this prevents ink from leaking. That makes sense. Pull out the nib under feed and spacer. So that looks like it's all one unit. To clean or replace the nib. 
when you use an overfeed, you do not need to use a spacer. Yeah, okay, so I don't have any overfeeds. I did not order that. Use adapters for popular dip pins such as Crow Quills, Hawk Quills, Gelat 303, Speedball Lettering, Mitchell and Broad's Lettering Nibs. Just insert the adapter into the front of the pump pin. Okay, so that would be something else I would need to order. This lets you use several tools in one pump pin. Keep an extra reservoir handy filled with your favorite ink or paint and cap for protection. When you run out of ink, slip the empty reservoir and press in the filled reservoir. Slip out, I'm sorry. I'm still, I'm still on, how do I remove the nib? Once you remove the nib and feed from the front and the reservoir from the rear, you should be able to look through the pin. This is a good way to make sure there are no obstructions. So let's go ahead, take off the back, remove the reservoir. This is gonna be one of those things I'm just gonna have to look up, I think. Remove the reservoir from the back of the pump pin to fill it. Do not fill to the top. Keep an airspace for safety when you press the filled reservoir back into the pump pin. Make sure the back cap is screwed on tightly. This secures the inside of the pin and ensures that no ink will leak out of the pump pin, even if the ink leaks out of the reservoir. Use the brush pump pin like a water pin. Press the pump to increase the flow. Don't worry about bending the body when you press. Replace the brush easily and quickly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look up a diagram that includes the nib underfeed and spacer removed so I can see exactly how this is supposed to come out because I am not seeing that. All right, so I don't know why, but I was having a lot of trouble or I am having a lot of trouble getting the music nib out, but the G nib is actually very easy to get out. So let me demonstrate this for you guys because there doesn't seem to be a lot of good pictures of it online, especially for the newer models. So this isn't really like a fountain pen the way we think of fountain pens. It's really just a sketching pen. So this is what your pen will probably look like. I can get it to focus when it arrives. You can usually easily remove the nib by grabbing the spacer and just pulling out like that. Now, for some reason, my music nib is jammed in pretty tight there. It's probably a very snug friction fit, and it's probably not quite as snug with the G nib. So you probably can't see this because my camera is refusing to focus today. So you'll have to check the blog, I guess. But there are these tiny little, um, like spots or dots on here, and that's going to help probably, from what I know about fountain pens, that's probably gonna serve the place of fins or feeds in the feeding the ink to the front of the nib. And I apologize that you guys can't see that. I don't know what the heck's going on with my camera lately. But again, check the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com and I'll make sure I have pictures of everything like that there. So now that I've shown you guys how to can I get the feet out? I know you're supposed to be able to get the feet out. I may not be able to get the feet out. I was having trouble with the music nib, but anyway, um, let me go ahead and completely, or try, attempt to completely disassemble this. Nope, not gonna be able to get that out. And I will clean these out and I'll see you guys in a little bit. And I'm just going to use a very mild solution of dish soap with water which is what I use for my fountain pens. And um, I'm probably going to use a baby's nostril flush kind of syringe to just flush the pin out like that. Um, and then I will probably try the same using the pump action. So I managed to get the music nib out. It was actually not that hard. I just need to apply more pressure than I was originally comfortable applying, which isn't like a significant amount of pressure. I was just being very careful. And you really don't want to put your spacer in first and then try to slip the nib in. That's not really the way you want to go. You can slip your nib in first and then slip your uh, spacer in. And with the music nib, that's going to be a tight fit. So you're going to need to use some force. And I recommend when you're removing the spacer and your nib, you use, if you have nails, like I have a little bit of nails, you work from underneath the spacer and push up. 
and it doesn't actually take a lot of force it's just probably going to take a little more force than some of us are generally comfortable with using with our fountain pens and i still can't get that feed out um, it's friction fit good in there, I guess, but I just wanted to show you guys that since I was struggling with it, um, I thought it might help someone else. All right, guys, so I am going to go ahead and fill these pens. They have been dried. They, I mean, they have been washed. They have been dried. They are now clean, I would think. Um, I know they've sent me so many beautiful, beautiful inks, um, and I do intend on putting those to good use, but for initial fills, I usually like going with carbon black ink, mostly because it is waterproof and Heidi says it's Copic proof. I haven't yet tested that myself. I, I mean, I saw some smearing, but you know, that could just be a dry marker. I wouldn't really call that a full test. So I'm using an eyedropper or really it's a pipette to fill my pen up to where there's sort of a line of frosted and then I'm going to pop it in like that and then put the back cap on. So we have one pin and I'll just go ahead and cap it for now. And then I'm gonna use my pipette to fill the other one. I'm not getting quite as good a fill as I would want. Getting a lot of air bubbles. That's because the Sailor, I'm sorry, the Platinum inks have this like fill reservoir in them, which can be, ugh, I really don't want to set this down, but I really have to cap this. Um, it can be useful, but if you're filling, filling multiple pens, it can also be annoying. And the, just the way you refill that is you recap it and you turn it upside down. For some reason, mine's a little loose in the bottle as well. And I'm going to that one fits really tight, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean some of this up and get some fresh paper, and I'll check in with you guys in a minute. All right, I have an inexpensive mixed media sketchbook here. Figured this is as good a place as any to test it out. And I will probably have to mark these pins to see which one's which. And let's get super zoomed in. Okay, so pumping, you pump to get the ink going. And there's still some water in there, unfortunately. There we go. Okay, so you see how um, it sort of beads up. Let me actually really zoom in for you guys. I don't care if I make a mess. You see how when I push it, it beads up like that? I may need to try a different paper. This may also be too scratchy. There we go. Now it's writing. Okay, so. Or. It was, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes these things take a little bit of breaking in too. Like with my first Jinhao mod, it took a lot of breaking in. And I was even investigating ways to make the fins larger, the feed larger, because it just wasn't delivering enough ink, which this might be, the, that might be the problem with this. I also, Looks like maybe I knocked one of my tines out of alignment. I don't know. I'll put this aside for a moment and we'll take a look instead at the GNIB. Probably go grab my Rhodia paper. All right, so I am. Aha, there we go. Now with any of these sort of flex pins, these super flexy pins, there's gonna be feed issues or flow issues. And um, I know a wetter ink can help solve that problem. And I've heard that um, that Noodler's, uh, their electric eel, the, their black uh, ink that's meant to lubricate piston pins is both waterproof and a little wetter. 
flowing. And I also know these things do take breaking in. All right, let's try it on a different paper maybe. Maybe that's the problem. At least while these things are still new and baby. I mean, look at all that mess I made on this paper. Let's see if we can't find a better paper. Cause that's kind of, that's just some um, Canton's biggie uh, mixed media paper, which is kind of my least favorite mixed media paper anyway. Okay. I need something smoother than that. And my eye, despite having a studio full of paper, is not really falling on anything. Well, we can try some scrap paper, I guess. It is smoother, but it isn't necessarily good for fountain pens. But this is a test. Genib again. All right, so that is spidering out everywhere. But it is writing a little bit better. So I think it was the paper, but I'm also making a mess. And that's kind of my own fault because I'm kind of over pumping it. Oh, great. And I rolled it right into my other mess. It's just that sort of morning for me, guys. Let's try and take a picture. All right, well, I'm gonna fish around and see if I really can't find a better paper. All right, let's try Stillman and Burns Beta paper. It's supposed to be watercolor paper, but it really feels more like a mixed media paper. And hopefully it'll work a little bit better. It's a nice thick paper. Of course, with all this pumping I'm having to do, I am making a mess. There we go, okay. That's pretty decent flex. I would say um, the Jinhao Custom I have has more flex, but it's also very, very prone to railroading. And I can't control how much ink gets to the um, gets from the feed to the nib, so I have to shake my pen a lot, which is basically the same thing I'm doing when I'm over pumping it like that. Now let's try. Let's see if we can't get this music nib to work, huh? Okay, there we go. Maybe. Oh, I want to chew up that paper. I'm gonna have to dig up my rhodia pad and see if I can't get it to work on that. Does anyone else, I mean, it could just be, because this is my first music nib. Does anyone who is experienced with music nib, d nibs, do you guys find them to be particularly scratchy? Am I mishandling it? Um, is it this particular nib? Is it the paper? It could totally be the paper. You do get a fair amount of flex though with it. So I am gonna go dig up my rhodia pad and see if I can't get the music nib to write a little bit better on that. All right guys, here is my rhodia pad, which I don't actually use a whole lot because I really don't prefer it. But I do use it when I am testing out new pens because new pens can be tricky. So here is that GNIM. And something I noticed I'm having a problem with is when I'm trying to recap it, it gets ink. Um, it basically depresses the pump action and it gets ink all over the inside of the cap, which gets ink all over the actual pen. I'm gonna try to clean that off. Cause I think you, some of you guys know, I really don't like having my hands filthy all the time cause it does carry on to the paper for me. Actually writes a lot better here on the Rhodia pad. And I misspoke way earlier when I referred to the company as Ackerman pens. It is Anderson pens that I ordered through, but they do sell the Ackerman pens. And I am trying these sketching tests. Doesn't always go so well on Rhodia paper. I'm just drawing a little something that is on my desk with, you know, 
make success. But I really think a big part of the problem is just breaking this thing and because these sort of flexible pins do tend to, in my opinion, have a longer break-in time. And I think a little bit of the ink buildup probably helps with ink flow because it gives it more of a surface to stick to. And this is something when I was taking advanced inking techniques, this is something we talked about in regards to our brushes, how you want your brushes to be fairly clean, but you don't want them to be um, overly clean. You don't want to ruin the surface of the hairs. And the same goes for your nibs. You want them to be clean, but you also want them to be a little bit gunky because it being a little bit gunky actually aids in retaining ink and increasing your ink flow. So I think that has helped with some of the issues. Just using it is probably going to help with some of the issues that I'm having. And I am making sure that that little hole is not covered when I put the cap on and then I cover it up. So let's try, let's see if this helps with the music nib. And just like with my G nib, the pump gets depressed when I put the cap on. So I'm cleaning it off just a little bit. Definitely feel like I'm having flow issue issues with the music nib. And music nibs, nibs are thirsty nibs. They do tend to use more ink. And they did tend a replacement. So if I sincerely feel like this nib is, there's something wrong with this nib, I can try out the other one. Okay, so with the music nib, you can pretty much write in one direction. So not great for sketching necessarily. Even the C's are giving me trouble. Yeah, I'm gonna have to noodle around with this music nib. Because there is flex to it and it can put down a lot of ink, but it seems to only really want to write in one direction. And it seems to take a lot of ink to get going. And it seems to do sports a lot. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this piqued your interest. Um, if you enjoy this video, if you found it interesting, if you found it inspiring, if you found it educational, please go ahead and leave a like. Consider subscribing. I am not a big fountain pen th enthusiast, uh, but I am interested in them for drawing. And I am interested in art pins and different types of art pins for drawing and for illustration and for comics. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, make sure you subscribe. Um, as these sort of things come up, I will do videos on it. I recently did a video on the Wink Pens Glass Nib Pen. So if you're interested in that, you should check that video out as well. I'm going to continue noodling around with the, um, the Ackerman Music Nib and see if I can't get it to work because I have found that with these very flexible nibs that put out a lot of ink, they sometimes require a lot of finessing. Sometimes it's all about the paper. Sometimes it's all about the ink. And sometimes the things that work in one will not work in another. So, you know, these sort of things require patience. If I still continue to have problems, I will probably write into Anderson Pins and see if they have any suggestions for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.